England, Canada, Australia, and many other countries are led politically by prime ministers to the Queen. In fact, she is the official head of 123 Commonwealth countries. America, Russia, and other countries, however, have a president and vice president. Usually, corporations have presidents and vice presidents. What does this mean? The US presidents rule from the White House. The Russian presidents also rule from the White House. The Jesuits, a large force behind the Illuminati, have their own White House as well. England is ruled from White Hall. Jordan Maxwell wrote, the United States government is being ruled from the White House. The government of England is being ruled from what is called White Hall. And White Hall, like our White House, is the symbol of power because the hall is like the Masonic Hall, the Lodge Hall, the Union Hall. Press Trevetti wrote, For those who think America controls the roost, it would do well to consider that the Queen of England is still the official head of Commonwealth, 123 countries and the official monarch of Australia and Canada, along with the United Kingdom. Add to that the fact that all Bush Sr. got for his two terms as President of USA is a mere knighthood of the British Empire. The original 13 colonies were actually called companies. Military units are also called companies. We sing patriotic songs like the Star-Spangled Banner, but a banner is a corporate advertisement, not a flag. You surrender with a white flag, no colors. When you get mad, you show your true colors. If you just won independence in a bloody revolution with Britain, would you choose the same three colors for your new US flag? Why does every heart ring true for the red, white, and blue? What about the gold fringed flag used by the military, hung at all courts, schools, and government buildings? It all has to do with the British Maritime Admiralty Law of Flags. David Icke wrote, This is also known as British Maritime Military Law, and this is why the American flag always has a gold fringe when displayed in the courts of the United States. You find the same in government buildings and federally funded schools. The gold fringe is a legal symbol indicating that the court is sitting under British Maritime Law and the Uniform Commercial Code. Military and merchant law, not common or constitutional law, under the Admiralty Law of Flags, the flag displayed gives notice of the law under which the ship, in this case the court, is regulated. Anyone entering that ship, court, accepts by doing so that they are submitting to the law indicated by that flag. Judges refuse to replace the flag with one without a fringe when asked by defendants who know the score because that changes the law under which the court is sitting. If you appear in a court with a gold-fringed flag, your constitutional rights are suspended, and you are being tried under British Maritime Military Merchant Law. You see, there are two kinds of law. This is a subject I, I love. I've been talking, talking about this for years. There are two kinds of law on the earth that rule the whole world, but most people don't know that. All over the world, all governments are ruled by what is called civil law. Civil law goes back to a Latin word, civili, which goes back to the word illi. Oh God, I mean, you go on for hours on this stuff. Civil law, which is called in all countries, the law of the land. So you'll say, well, you can't do that because that's against the law of the land. The law of the land is civil law, Roman civil law, the law of the land. But there is a second law which also operates all over the earth identical. It's called UCC, Uniform Commercial Code. That is the law of God in the world of business. I don't care if you're in Japan, in Africa, in China, in, in Istanbul, Turkey. If you have a company, if you have a corporation, if you are doing business where you buy and sell and make money, you are operating on this earth under something called UCC, Uniform Commercial Code. Because if all countries worked on a different commercial code, then nobody could do business with anybody. 
You couldn't trust Japan to pay you. you. Japan couldn't trust America to pay them for the cars because everybody has their own laws. Uh-uh. Under the Caesars of Rome, they established under Caesar that all nations in the empire that do business, everybody plays on a, on a level field. If you do business in Africa with China, you pay them. And if Africa does uh, uh, business with American companies, you pay them. You pay. Whatever it is you're doing business, you don't mess around. The most severe law in this world is called UCC, Uniform Commercial Code. It's the Bible of business on the earth. Uniform Commercial Code. Uniform Commercial Code is based directly on Vatican canon law, on the Roman canon law. Consequently, when a ship pulls into port, it pulls in and stops in its call in its berth. The ship is now in its berth. Because it is on the law of the high seas or commercial maritime, UCC commercial law rules the seas. So when the ship pulls into its berth, the first thing the captain must do is to present a certificate of manifest to the port authorities which means that the port authorities need to know how much is on this ship that you're bringing into our country and our economy. How many TVs, how many cars, uh, whatever you're bringing, how much you're bringing into our economy. So you have to have a certificate of manifest of what is the value of your ship here, what are you doing? Consequently, when you are born, you come out of your mother's water. Therefore, you must have a birth certificate a certificate of manifest because you are a corporation owned item you are a human resource international maritime admiralty law the law of the high seas began in samaria was perfected in rome and continues to this day jordan maxwell has explained that the way we trade commerce today is modeled after the masons templar knights thousand year old system Notice how, regardless of whether you send a product by air, water, or land, you ship it. The ship pulls into its berth and ties to the dock. The captain has to provide the port authorities with a certificate of manifest, declaring the products he has bought. Through a legal loophole the royals have created, U.S. citizens are considered property of the queen under British maritime law. Since we are born of our mother's water, from her birth canal, we are thereby a maritime product, a shipped commodity. Our mothers were delivering a product under maritime law, and that's why we are born in a delivery room. That's why the dock signs your birth certificate, your certificate of manifest. You're kept in the maternity ward. Why a ward? No other hospital areas are called wards. Prisons have wards and wardens. The judge sits on the bench for the bank. Banks are on both sides of a river. A river bank directs the flow of the current sea. The current sea. The cash flow. The current sea is deposited from bank to bank down the river. We're just consumers to advertise to just human resources to be used up like batteries, and they are the social engineers molding us useless eaters into wage slavery. Understanding words is what you really need to start doing. You need to start doing your homework and understanding words. If you put an S in front of words, it becomes swords. And that's what words are. They are cutting. They can cause you great trouble. Humans are word control creatures. So we need to establish what words mean. Again, when we talk about law, there's a Roman maximum in law that says, for he that would be deceived, let him simply meaning if you are so ignorant as to be deceived then that's your business that's your problem so you need to do your homework and find out what the words mean especially in relation to law and government 
because there is a whole a world of occultism that is operating today throughout the world in which you use certain words and when those words are used in a court they don't mean the same thing at all. Understanding law and the words of law there are two things that this planet has water and earth water and land consequently there are two kinds of law the law of the land and the law of water you've heard the term law of the land but in point of fact that's precisely what this word means law of the land because it is the people who live on land and that is opposed to something else called the law of the high seas or the law of water you need to understand the difference the law of the land is the law of the culture that lives on the land and so consequently the law of the land is different in every country you can do things in America you can't do in Russia you can do things in Africa you can't do in England so the law of the land is the law of the culture that lives on that particular land however there is a higher law that dominates the entire world it's called the law of the water or the law of the high seas the law of water is referred to as the law of money it doesn't matter what color you are where you're from or where you live money is money and anytime you're doing banking or using money you are now under the law of water maritime admiralty the very word merchant comes from mer m-e-r for the sea for water as a mermaid we have merchant merchant bankers let me give an example of the difference between the law of water and the law of the land the law of water as I said is a law of banking money as opposed to the law of the custom of the people or the law of the land um, the Statue of Liberty must be put in water it could not be put on American land as such it had to be put in the harbor because it's not the Statue of Freedom it's a Statue of Liberty Liberty is what a sailor gets when he pulls into port on a ship he gets Liberty he's not free so America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave we're not free or brave period we're not free this is not a free country now let me give you an example of how this law of the water works why is it that you have to go to court people are always concerned about going to court you go to court because you play basketball and tennis on a court how do you play tennis on a court you play with a racket why <laughs> that's what it is it's a racket <laughs> and make no mistake they do not pick words by chance these words are very serious they do not use words in terms um, with no avail these words are very important when you go into a court what's the idea of going to court it's a game like basketball the whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court uh, one team gets up and they throw the ball over to that team of lawyers that team gets up and throws the ball back into their court and consequently it's a ball game and the judge is wearing a black robe so he is the referee the judge is the referee he doesn't care which side wins or loses because he's going to get paid anyway so he couldn't care less he's merely there as a referee and that's why he wears a black robe and that's another interesting subject we can get into later but the judge is a, is a referee between two teams the judge that we are told rules from the bench the word bench in Latin is a bank therefore the judge rules for the bank where do you find banks you find banks on both sides of a river they're called river banks and what does a river bank do it directs the flow of the current sea <laughs> the juice 
Consequently, your money is currency because it's the flow, the cash flow. And I'll give you an example of how this works. When a ship pulls into a harbor, all ships are referred to as female. Airships, rocket ships, sailing ships are always female. Why? There's a very good reason. Maritime Admiralty Banking Law says all ships are female because uh, they're carrying items. They're carrying items for money, and so consequently they are under Maritime Admiralty Law. Let me give you an example of how this works. When a ship pulls into a harbor, it parks at the dock, and it ties off at the dock. The captain has to provide for the um, port authorities a certificate of manifest because yesterday the ship was not here but this morning the ship pulled in so it has manifested so consequently all the products the 800 million dollars worth of TVs or Toyotas have manifested so each one of those items coming off of that ship has come off of water and each end they has come in a ship and consequently on a ship all ships have a captain the word captain comes from a Latin word capital money so the captain represents the money that's on board the ship and as I said the captain has to present to the port authorities a certificate of manifest for each and every item how much does it weigh what color is it how many doors does it have etc and consequently the captain presents a certificate of manifest. The ship is sitting in its berth. Wherever a ship sits when it docks is called its berth. She sits in her berth. All the items, as I said, coming off that ship represent money. They came in on water. They are maritime admiralty product. And this is true all over the world. Now, when you were born your mother's water broke and when your mother's water broke you came out and this is why you have to have a birth certificate because you are a maritime admiralty product under international law you are considered your body is considered a maritime admiralty product your mother delivered you this is why if you go to Sears and buy a refrigerator they will ship it to you they will deliver it. And that's why you were in your delivery room. Your mother was delivering a product. Maritime Admiralty, you came down your mother's birth canal. <laughs> and once you, uh, and as you're taking one of the, uh, the televisions or the cars off the ship and it falls down and breaks, uh, that's all right. Sometimes they're stillborn, so consequently you've lost money on that one. Therefore, you have to have a death certificate. And it's always signed by the doc. The doc has to sign your birth certificate and your death certificate. All of these words and terms are maritime admiralty banking words. And therefore, if you understand lawyers, and judges and courts and government are all under international maritime admiralty law. All religions, all churches in the world operate under maritime law. This is why all churches are divided into denominations like 20s and 50s and 100s. Serious. This is why they're called denominations because all churches are nothing more than the product of maritime admiralty banking. The United States Corporation came about just after the Civil War. The Act of 1871 was passed by Congress creating a separate form of government for DC, essentially turning it into a corporation. It was decided that employees would be called citizens. So when you say in a court or on paper that you are a citizen of the United States, you are not a free American but an employee of U.S. Inc. When you get a fine, a ticket, a bill, or get sued, you must sign in all capital letters. When you die, your Masonic tombstone by law will have all capital letters to show their employee has died. 
the entity that is your name in all caps, is your Maritime Admiralty Product Code. Upper and lower case letters legally represents you, your body. Ah, the government. It loves you and wants to keep you safe and well. It even wants to make paying taxes, fines, and court costs easier for you. How? Well, you'll need to meet your straw man. He was born the same day you were. He looks like you, has the same name, and lives in your house, but you never knew he existed. You will have even paid his parking tickets or taxes. The worst part? He's been dead from day one. From every birth certificate, a legal personality, or legal fiction, is created with the same name to confuse little old you into thinking it's you. So, there is a human you and a paper you, or as it's commonly known, a straw man. So when it seems like government officials, court clerks, or the police are speaking English, they aren't. They're speaking legalese, designed to make you agree to verbal and written contracts without even knowing about it, all spun from Black's Law Dictionary. For example, when the police say, do you understand, you'll say, yes. What they are really saying is, do you stand under our authority? Oops a daisy, you just created a verbal contract with them. Oh, you clever government. Did you know that whenever you register something, you are handing over title to the person you register it with? That's right! Whenever you register something with the government, they assume it belongs to them. Registered your car? Super! Now you are the registered keeper of your vehicle, and the government can crush it when you don't pay your, ahem, <clears throat> straw man's taxes. Expecting a new bundle of joy? Well then, you need to register your little darling with a birth certificate. Then they can start the process all over again and create a new straw man for your little one. Isn't that great? So when Junior grows up, he'll be able to generate revenue just like you have. When you notify on your baby by signing the birth certificate, your child becomes a ward of state. And if the government doesn't like what you're doing, they'll assume it's okay to take the child away or make new rules for things they don't like. Not enough school? Smacking your child? Shouting too loudly? Then it's off to social services for the little one. When you get a bill, it's sent to you but belongs to your straw man, not you. That's why bills, fines, and summons start with Mr., Mrs., or Ms. Sometimes you'll see your surname in capitals, just like on a gravestone. That's because your straw man is dead and just a silly piece of paper, created before you could comprehend or even consent to it. When you go to court, you represent your straw man. So you, the human, take on any costs, fees, taxes, and fines involved for the straw man. The human you doesn't even need to pay them. But you made a contract with the court by appearing on behalf of your legal personality or straw man. Just like the government knew you would. Confused? <laughs> well, don't worry. The government doesn't want you to know anyway. If you knew, you'd stop paying things like council tax and parking tickets. Because when you go to court, you are representing your straw man. You are you, alive and made of flesh and blood. Your straw man, or legal personality, is a piece of paper created from your birth certificate. And you think it's you. What a silly billy. The Uniform Commercial Code was approved by the American Bar Association, which is a franchise, a subordinate branch, of the British legal system and its hierarchy based in London's Temple Bar, named after the Illuminati Knights Templar Secret Society. The power that controls America is based in Britain and Europe, because that is where the power is located that owns the United States Corporation. By the way, if you think it is strange that a court on dry land could be administered under maritime law, Look at U.S. Code Title 18 B7. It says that admiralty jurisdiction is applicable in the following locations. 1. The high seas. 2. Any American ship. 3. Any lands reserved or acquired for the use of the United States and under the exclusive or concurrent jurisdiction thereof, or any place purchased or otherwise acquired by the United States by consent of the legislature of the state. 
in other words, mainland America. All this is founded on Roman law because the Illuminati have been playing this game throughout the centuries wherever they have gone. The major politicians know that this is how things are, and so do the government administrators, judges, lawyers, and insider journalists. Those who realize what is happening and ask the court for the name of the true creditor or recipients of the fines imposed by the legal system are always refused this information by the judge. The true creditors in such cases and the ultimate recipient of the fines are the bankers to which the corporation, country, is bankrupt. Lawyers, or barristers, have to take the bar association, bar exam, just as alcoholics go to the bar, sugar junkies eat candy bars, and gamblers hope to get three bars on the slot machine. These all derive from the Templars' turn of the 13th century Temple Bar in England. Originally, the Temple Bar was literally just a bar, or chain, between two posts next to the Temple Law Courts. This soon became a huge stone gate, and there were eventually eight of these gates built so the elites could restrict and control trade within the city of London. They were taken down during the 19th century, but then each stone was numbered and kept in storage until 2004, when they just rebuilt the Temple Bar in London. I'm telling you that until you understand the laws, the symbols, the emblems, what these words mean, you're never going to suspect how far gone we really are. Did you know, for instance, that your birth certificate is a security on the stock exchange in the New York stock market? Did you know that? Because if you order your birth certificate, get a new one, order your birth certificate, it only costs you, sometimes it's free, it only, only costs you a few dollars, order your birth certificate. On your birth certificate, all birth certificates in this country, on the bottom, it will tell you, this is printed on security papers. Do not accept, if not on full color security paper. Then on the right hand corner, you will always have a series of numbers, red numbers, printed on the, on the birth certificate. Those numbers are a security stock exchange number on the world stock exchange. You go to any good stock office and ask them, check these numbers in your computer and see how much this stock is worth, the certificate. And they will check it on the New York Stock Exchange and find you, your birth certificate, is a stock on the stock exchange in America. Why? Because you are worth money to the international bank that bought you in 1930. We need to wake up. This is serious stuff. David Icke wrote, the United States Corporation was created behind the screen of a federal government when, after the manufactured victory in the American War of Independence, the British colonies exchanged overt dictatorship from London with the far more effective covert dictatorship that has been in place ever since. In effect, the Virginia Company, the corporation headed by the British crown that controlled the former colonies, simply changed its name to the United States and other related pseudonyms. These include the U.S., USA, United States of America, Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, Federal Government, and Feds. The United States Corporation is based in the District of Columbia, and the current president of the corporation is a man called George W. Bush. He is not the president of the people, or the country as they are led to believe. That's just the smokescreen. This means that Bush launched a war on terrorism on behalf of a private corporation to further the goals of that corporation. It had nothing to do with America or Americans, because these are very different legal entities. It is the United States Corporation that owns the United States military and everything else that comes under the term federal. This includes the Federal Reserve, the central bank of the United States, which is, in reality, a private bank owned by controlling stockholders and controllers of the U.S. corporation that are not even American. This is the bank from which the United States Corporation borrows money. In 1868, there was a corporation founded. In, uh, anyone can incorporate a company. Well, in 1868, there was a company incorporated. And in that particular company, the founders of that company called it, they referred to it as the United States Corporation. 
and they stipulated that anybody who would be a member of that corporation or work for that corporation would be called not an employee but a citizen. So today, if you are asked, are you a citizen of the United States, what you think you're being asked is, are you lawfully in this country to do business? That's not lawfully what's being asked. They didn't ask you if you were in America lawfully. They asked you a specific question. Are you of your own volition, out of your own mouth, testifying that you are a citizen of the United States? Because in that way, citizen of the United States means you are an employee of a foreign corporation operating on international maritime law. So today, the President of the United States is the President of a privately owned company. The company is called United States. And the word president is always a word that is used in corporate law. Banks have presidents. All companies have presidents. So there's a corporation called United States, privately owned, and it has a president. It's an extraordinary story of occult uh, treason, high treason and crimes against the state. Make no mistake about it. There has never been a country on the face of the earth as far back into history as you can go. There has never existed a country in which the people rose up and demanded their right to be free. Never. The concept of human, spiritual, intellectual, and physical freedom is a totally uh, concept that has never, ever existed on the earth. The only time that it has ever come into existence was the founding of this country where it was understood that we were sovereigns and we owned our bodies and consequently since 1868 we're now on the International Maritime Admiralty Law. Think about this, when cowboys in Indian movies, when the cowboys would ride into town, they get off the horse, they were wearing guns. How come they could walk into a bar carrying guns? And if two guys got in an argument, they could go out on the street and draw on each other in front of the sheriff's office, and the sheriff would do nothing. How come? How come that men could go out in the street and shoot each other in front of everyone and had nothing be done about it? The reason why is because before 1868, all Americans were considered sovereigns. And that's one of the nice things about being a sovereign, is you have the right to be yourself.